Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to HMP. Once bitten is going well strong. I hear, man, we got our next werewolf film is Wolfen. My name is Adam Portress, and joining me today, he just found out his last-minute Halloween costume idea, naked Edward James Almost, sweet Sean Zakobacks from the internet. I, I, I'm working on it. I'm trimming down. And Bruce would be here, but he's on a train uh, just eating donuts to settle his stomach. <laughs> We had Bruce on earlier during the, uh, he literally is on a train right now, uh, going back home, him and his uh, son, spent his 16th birthday, not Bruce's, his son's, uh, 16th birthday out in the New York cities, and uh, riding back on the train, very old school. But then again, that that feels very Bruce, though, too, doesn't it? Man, I had a great experience when I took the train. Remember when we met up in New York? Mm-hmm. I, I from From New York, the next thing we had to do was we had to go to Philadelphia for a wedding. And we took the train from New York to Philadelphia. It was a wonderful experience. Yeah, that's the roots still do it, from what I'm to understand. Well, and that's 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 the tale. The tale is they always go back to Philly every night. I don't know how true that is, but that was that was the saying for a while. At least when they kind of started the Tonight Show and everything, they're like, no, but they ride back to Philly every night. It it was a great experience because you don't have any of the like the headaches of uh, an airport. And you don't have to drive anywhere. It's really lovely. And if the roots are on, you get a pretty good performance as well. So I wish the roots were there. I'd go, hey, it's that guy that I, the one guy I recognize from the roots. Hey, Quest Love, you and that hair. I tell you what, he would come to like when he, when they came to Charlotte and stuff. Uh, I mm-hmm. remember uh, he went to like Manifest and they, they okay, sh- they your, sh- your dreams have been answered. Oh, Bruce Leslie's back, everybody. But he would go, your he dreams would, have been answered. Shut up, I'm finishing the story. So he oh, would have sorry. this, uh, he would have a, uh, a receipt that was like 15 feet long of all the, all the music he bought at Manifest. It was unreal. Mm-hmm. So that was just, that's who that dude is. He just like, he is that music guy for sure. Oh, well, welcome to the show, everybody. Bruce Leslie, Bruce, we're covering Wolfen today. And this was, uh, this was your final choice here. Uh, tell us why it's not my final choice. Cause we still got a couple of weeks. Well, you know what I mean? Well, there were three <laughs> movies that came out. There were three movies that basically came out at the same time about werewolves. And I was only allowed to watch one of them because I was young. I mean, I didn't see any of them in the theater, but you know, on VHS or whatever, because two of the three had scenes that took place in adult movie houses. Yeah. This one didn't. So this is the one I got to watch. <laughs> this one had the creepy monster vision. And when I was 10 years old, I thought this movie was a very different movie than it turned out to be when I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't say. It's a little bit different yeah. than that. So, yeah, so, so, you, in, so your he- in your head, the movie isn't what if Serpico fought a werewolf? It, in my head, it was a werewolf movie. Right. This is not a werewolf movie. It is not. Can we just? Can we? Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, does anybody disagree with me that this is not a werewolf movie? Nah, not no, I don't. No. no. Yeah. No, so we got... in my mind, I remembered it as, as a werewolf movie. Now I'm disappointed that I picked it. Well, what with the name Wolfen and a wolf on the cover of it, you, you ought to figure. But we'll get we'll get into all of that. But before we do, we do want to say a big giant thank you to the people who support us over at patreon.com slash HMP. Those awesome people get pre-show, post-show, Dinger Zone. Of course, on Dinger Zone, we actually have Bruce for the whole thing instead of like the last <laughs> just a couple minutes here. Uh, but uh, we got a lot of good stuff. We like just again, want to thank everybody who supports this program week in and week out. It means a whole heck of a lot to us. And then you guys get some bonus stuff back at the exact same time. If you hate this show, if you don't want to, you know, help support it, that's fine. That's that's a okay. Why, no, why are no, you still Adam, listening? We've done this before. If they hate the show, give us ten grand each, and we won't do it for three months. That's true. Go ahead and just go ahead and do it. You want to stop this show? You <laughs> have the power in your hands to shop to stop this program. Try to do it. Just try to do it. Go ahead. Patreon.com slash HB. Try to stop this program. I double does, dog there. That, That's how we need that to do it. Start you, Sean. <laughs> Did hate, I undercut you? Hate buy us off. Yeah, hate buy us off. The running rate right now is ten grand a month for the three of us. So uh, you know, run that at patreon.com slash HMP. You got your marching orders, you know what's up. All right, let's I got a lot of <laughs> Go ahead. I was gonna say I got a lot of money to buy like pop and cookies and candy and stuff as a kid because I would annoy a family member until they give me money just to get me to go away. Yeah. Uh, this it's it's, it's not a strong suit. It's not the worst plan in the world. 
All right, let's get into it. Here's the IMDb plot line for Wolfen. As we all know, IMDb 100% correct in everything they say and or do. A New York cop investigates a series of brutal deaths that resemble animal attacks. Wow, what a what a, if that don't draw you into the film, I don't know what will. Now, do you know why they resemble animal attacks? Cuz they're done by animals. Yes, the animals attack people. Son of a gun. Now, I will say before we get too much into the to the too further into this, I do want to say one thing. I made it through a solid 3 days in New York without being attacked by a single wolf because huh. apparently they've got the wolf problem under control since 1981. Oh, that's good. After that it was okay then. So Albert Finney's work has it has accomplished something. Oh boy, we're going to talk about Albert Finney's work, but Adam is this about where we talk about a list? Or Almost, but we got we got that? we got Whitney Stryber who wrote the novel here. David uh, Ayer, not the not the other one that you, you're thinking of, not the Suicide Squad one, but this one's E Y R E, uh, and Michael Wadlaw who also directed, and uh, Dave, uh, David Ayer wrote the screenplay along with him, and Eric Roth, uncredited. Eric Roth, yeah. uh, a fantastic writer in his own right and everything, uh, yeah. not credited for this, and uh, directed by Michael Wedlaw. But let's talk about it because uh, this this sucker's got everything in it. We got pour yourself a glass of uh, Hennessy because we've got Albert Finney doing a great impression of an elderly Josh Brolin in The Goonies meets James May. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Gregory Hines is tap dancing a guy who looks like he could be ludicrous. I don't know. Uh, we got my dad, my TV dad, Reginald Val Johnson is here, so that bumps it up one Robin rating in and so of itself. young and handsome, too. We got Principal Strickland is here, uh, Captain Adama, the sexy years, windmills, night attacks, werewolf vision that I'm now just learning Sony must have ripped off for one of its picture modes in the mini DV high eight camcorder days of the mid to late 90s. I would just have called it Wolf and Vision had I seen this movie back then. Uh, later on, we also get Junkie Vision, the way they got, it's like they got new toys and they just wanted to play with them, you know, we all get that. Uh, we got a morgue full of dead people, chowder buckets and brats everywhere, you don't see that in movies anymore. Dirty Dogs, Explosion Guy at the Desk, dropping all the hits. Uh, or Exposition Guy, rather. <laughs> That's a better word for it. A Barrel Fire, we need more of those. Hilarious taxidermy jokes, we get the biggest load of scientific BS that there's ever been for a werewolf film. Don't worry, we follow that up with a racist term that I bet you've never heard of before. Bridge Work, Stripping Down Under the Boardwalk with Edward James Almost. That sounds like a good album name. Killing Werewolves Out of a Chopper, Hour and 15, Still No Werewolf, I'm getting concerned. A Tron Sex Scene, Add for Lay's potato chips, uh, fun <laughs> parabolic microphones and night vision, first werewolf on the screen, one hour and 27 minutes and 50 seconds, <laughs> and it lasts for, I think, 48 seconds, or 48 frames, rather. Uh, pigeon sounds, a CRT projector, you'll wait and wait and wait, and then, then there's a, a backseat driver that, you know, it's the best. We got hand-severing, throat-gnarling, car, car exploding, destroying models, mirror blinds, and more. This movie's got everything. Hold on a second. Adam, I'm having a very hard time hearing what you're saying because of the the background noise. Don't worry, Bruce. I turned it down on my side so no one so they didn't hear it all. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> but very let's good. let's get do into you, it. Do you guys need me to mute or something? It, just like join in. Yeah. I think that every time I, I think that every time you're not talking, you probably should, Bruce. Yeah, just because it's just it's a lot of background coming it's in. It's a lot of noise. But that's why I was that's that's so why I'm gonna I try heard. doing it like this and tell yes. me if this is no, no, it's good when you're talking. It's great. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, Sean, had you ever seen Wolfen before? Because I, 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 like I'd mentioned I, previously, I had not had any. Uh, I, this was like the third run movie for me, so to speak. Right? You see American Werewolf in yeah. London, and you're like, oh my god, you can't do better than this. And the fact is. You can't, right? So you, then they go to Wolfen, and it's like, well, that ain't American Werewolf in London, so bye bye. And then, well, like, I see Wolf, and I'm just like, do do I want to be disappointed again? I think I'll just stay with the one that I know. <laughs> Can I give you just a quick little tidbit to take away here while I'm unmuted? Sure. But Wolfen made for about twenty million dollars, did about two at the box office. The Howling made for two and did about twenty at the box office. Shoo! They should have flipped a few things. I don't know what you pay. How do you pay that much money for this? I, I hadn't. Well, Gregory it's, it's, Hines, you don't dance cheap. <laughs> it's the actors. I mean, yeah. the, the, the actors are who you're paying here because you have a lot of really good actors. I had never even heard of this movie before. Never mind seen it. And so when Bruce made the most audacious uh, uh, thing I've, I, I've heard on this show so far 
of saying that Wolfen was a better movie than uh, uh, okay. I'm American going to Werewolf defend that. I'm going to defend that. I said that there is a certain community that thinks Wolfen is the best of the three. They came out at time, and I'll put it this way: if you don't like American Werewolf, you're not going to like The Howling. So the people that like Wolfen probably don't like those other two, but I think more people like those other two. Does that make more sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, and, and I will tell you that I, I, I do not, I, I am not going, I, I am not here to slam dunk on this movie. This movie was a fun watch for me. This movie is like, like I said, it's like, what if Serpico fought wolves? Like that's <laughs> literally what this, this movie is. And it's, and it's well acted. You know, again, it's it's the same problem that all three of these movies have is that when it's slow, it is so slow. But it's and that's also a sign of the times. Yes, and, without and, a doubt. Without a doubt. But also I, I, part I'm sorry, I just wanted to say things quick and then I'm mute. But also I think part of the box office failure is they did not want this to be a drive in movie, so they made it two hours long. This probably would have made some money if it was a drive in movie at ninety minutes. I uh, might have, I, you know, I, I, I can't, you, you never really know, but it's got a cool title. Like Wolfen's a great title. And I like, uh, uh, I like, I, I don't know how much I love Albert Finney as a New Yorker, but it's I do like so it. You know, bizarre. Dustin Hoffman, Dustin Hoffman basically begged for the role and they said, Dustin Hoffman, we don't think you're believable as a New York cop. We're getting Albert Finney from London. My God. And, and and you know the and I like all the other people that are in this movie. I really do. Gregory Hines is great as always. I can't think of something where like he's in plenty of movies that I that are, are bad movies, but I don't think he's bad in them. And and here's the thing: I now this a movie to see what old people looked like when they were young because of Olmos and uh, yeah. Reginald Bell Johnson, etc. Yeah, Gregory Hines looks great, and like yeah. and and he's and he's. He's acting. He's really actually acting in this. And like, he's yeah. giving it a little something. And, uh, I, I don't know exactly what his character does. Like, are you, are you on the police? <laughs> he has or a gun at one point. Do you work with the hospital? I, I can't <laughs> quite tell. I can't put a finger on where you're supposed to go. Uh, winning he, him. he claims to be a master of karate. And then he does some really disappointing kicks for a, for a professional dancer. Like, that's what got me. It's like, I don't care if you know karate or not, but you're a dancer. You can straighten that knee on a kick. <laughs> but yeah i yeah albert finney i honestly because i went into this and i don't like i don't even think i remembered albert finney even being in this thing and then when that name when his name comes up as the first name in this i'm like albert finney is in this movie <laughs> and then when he shows up looking like joe don baker it's even yeah, weirder it really is man and and tom noonan's in this movie and i love tom noonan you know, every time you he see him was, in something, was he Frankenstein in the uh, Monster Squad? I think that's what I know Tom Noonan for. I know him from RoboCop too. Yeah, I think that's my biggest one. Yeah, I didn't realize they made a sequel. <laughs> they they made a couple, and uh, maybe not so much. But so and when, uh, yeah, Adam, I, I was going to ask you, so you had heard of this movie before, you just hadn't seen it. You know, what was funny. Uh, I was trying to remember back of like when I'd kind of like what kind of memory I had of Wolfen. And, and oddly enough, what I remember just hearing the name more than anything was mm -hmm. in a Phil Hendry phone call. <laughs> Get out of here. R.C. Oh, classic Phil Hendry. R.C. Collins would call called up and wanted to share his uh, his top scariest mo Halloween movies of all time. And I'm trying to remember them all, but none of them were particularly scary. Uh -huh. And one of the he has a <laughs> pet cemetery. It's like uh, pet cemetery. I'm like, it's OK. But one of the best of all time, scariest movie I've ever seen that got pets in it. <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> and then they talk about and he goes wolfen like wolfen there's so <laughs> many great werewolf movies why in the world do you pick wolfen let me tell you something man wolfen is, is scary as all hell man i'll tell you that right now <laughs> like it was just like well, it was, wolfen was just a, was doing a, joke. a bill hendry bit and didn't realize maybe <laughs> But that's 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 what that's what I remembered from this is, was was just that RC Collins saying that this was the best werewolf movie of all time and, and it was just and I'm like okay it's got to be crap then so I seriously didn't want to watch it and, but you're right Sean this thing it is 
interesting from a visual standpoint and everything because while uh, not not a high concept or anything. They wanted to make this movie look good. They have taken the yeah. time with stuff. They are framing things well. The neat little I wanted, photo I stuff that they're doing for the werewolf vision. Went, Great. By the way, mm-hmm. we were asking about the budget. That church, you know how there's like all this, like they've done a major demo and there's like multiple blocks of nothing but rubble. And then there's this broken down, burnt down church in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, they took an empty demo field. They actually built that church, then set it on fire. That was great when he says that, set it on fire, and then his voice goes out digitally. <laughs> that's amazing. That's some stuff fire. that happens in a movie, and we're like, Bruce is stuck in the internet forever now. <laughs> <laughs> he's the he's our lawnmower man. <laughs> Try to get him out. <laughs> By the way, I saw like I I still have not seen the original Lawnmower Man, but I saw Lawnmower Man two on VHS with a group of people in the back of a video store. It was wow, it was bad. Wow, the first one's bad too, uh, but I saw it multiple times. Oh, there that he Brewer is. is in that one. <laughs> I I don't know. That's me. <laughs> I don't know, man. But like, yeah. Again, though, Albert Finney just like it feels like he is in. Why is he in this movie? How did they get him? Why did he agree to this? What's going on? I'm guessing that the filmmakers just really liked Albert Finney, which I understand. Like, you know, Albert Finney's a really good actor. I just think he's the wrong actor for this role. Like, you need somebody who's far more hard boiled. And I know he's doing his best, but his 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 best of like like angry New York guy. Like you know, I, 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 at the at the end of his rope, New York guy. Yeah, it, I, I'm not buying it from Albert Finney. I'm just not. And maybe it's it's with my 2023 eyes. Like maybe it's different in 1981. But I I, I can't think it is. No, and there's and I I like I said I also love I I love his look in this and everything. I, I don't know what their thoughts were of like, this is what a New York detective looks like after he's just been fired off the force as he's wearing a hoodie. Yeah. Just you know, he just looks ashamed. He he looks like he looks like your grandma, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, kinda. He's like, oh great, like um, oh, what's your face from uh from the Goonies? <laughs> oh my lord, that's funny. <laughs> looks a little like her. Looks little, and then Mama looks a little like Mama, Mama from, from the Goonies. Mama yeah, from the tray. it's uh, but, yeah. I don't know. I just don't. It's but he's doing the best with what he can, and like, and God bless him. He's not looking at. I don't think he looks at this as if it's kind of a bad role. Neither does Edward James almost. Who, by the way, no, is kind no of one in this it. movie. No one in this movie believes they're slumming it. Everyone no. thinks. Everyone thinks that this is this is uh, high drama, which is great. Like that's kind of what you want in your in your horror. Is I don't even know if you consider this a horror movie though. It's a thriller, right? Really? Yeah. I mean, it's sold as a horror movie with a name like Wolfen with a cover like a wolf just, you know, snarling, you know, straight at your face there and everything. That's what you're good. That's what it's sold as, I think. Yeah. But certainly not what we what we get delivered. So I, I feel like, you know, in 1981, if you're walking into one of three, uh, you know, werewolf films and stuff, I feel like <laughs> this one is the most disappointing of them all on account of a very little werewolf. Honestly, let's be frank. It ain't even werewolf. This this isn't even werewolf film. This is just a wolf film. It's wolves. Although, and, and I do have to, I, I I gotta ask, like, how many people do you think in the world, outside of like, uh, your uh, film critics, how many people in the world do you think saw all three movies? Like, saw uh, uh American Werewolf in London and The Howling and Wolfen. Uh, in the theater, it's got to be pretty low. But I, will it's got to be super low, right? But I will say this: um, horror fans, like the 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 crazed ones out there, they are that group that it doesn't matter who is in the thing, what it is, or what's involved. Does it, it does it have even the slightest stench of horror? We're there, and but like are there the, crazy those people horror, exist. Are there crazy horror fans in 1981? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I oh, mean, I guess so. Fanta, what's the name of that? Magazine? Fangoria. Fangoria. Yeah, yeah that got, was out by then, right? Yeah, Famous Monsters of Filmland and stuff magazine. They're like so, like it's like it's been a thing forever, almost uh, damn near since the inception of of the genre and everything. It, I mean, it went for sci fi a lot in the fifties and stuff, but closely thereafter, when we started started up in the kind of really honest to goodness seventies, but even then, so, still a lot of good stuff in the sixties. But you can even go back and talk about Universal Monsters and stuff. So like. 
<laughs> you know, but th- I think they came. I think the 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 craze kind of came your late seventies, early eighties, and stuff when we started pumping out those things. When you're like your Exorcist and things came out, and it it really was, and it goes in cycles. It had that you know that boom there, and then there was like the that boom of the eighties, and then the boom of like the nineties and stuff with like your scream and kind of rebooting horror and everything, and then you and we, we rebooted again with three your, different attempts at rebooting the werewolf here now. Three different styles of redefining the the monster movie here because sure. we had we had the howling trying the slasher take uh american werewolf trying the comedy and then here we have the police procedural the i, w- I would call it more hard-boiled noir yeah, yeah there yeah. you go one of my <laughs> with big... the naked edward james almost pretending to be one of the four native americans who still live in manhattan can we be honest though? Like, I mean, I I was hoping I was like, okay, Edward James almost is naked. He's like, he's hanging out underneath a pier, just going bananas. I'm ready for him to turn into a wolf. Here comes the scene that we've been waiting for, and nothing. What hand a what, God, what a joke. honest truth, for real. Hand to God, honest truth. Way more afraid of a naked Edward James almost than I am of a wolf. He is boy. He's like he's he's running after him and stuff real quick. A, a, yeah, a naked man running at you real fast is pretty frightening. I don't care who you are. Uh, it's true. Not any man. Edward James almost Jaime Escalante himself. <laughs> he he's he's got it. Like this is where you can like kind of see that young Edward James almost. And you're like, oh, okay, I get what people are seeing here. The guy is just he's. He's got a dynamicness to him and like in his face, like he's got a great, he's got a great face for TV for in movies and stuff because like, you know, he's scarred up and everything, but it like, it adds so much depth and character, but then you can look and see in his eyes. He ain't just relying on that face. That dude can act. Yeah, it's true, man. I didn't realize this. So Wolfen's 81. Uh, he does a bunch of stuff in 81 and, but, but his next big thing is Annie, of course, or he's, he's daddy Warbucks. And that seems more uh, on point with him as an actor. Right. I mean, I, I, I look, oh, I uh, think he was daddy Warbucks. Yeah. In, in the 1982 Annie movie. Yeah. Wow. I always, man, I always assumed it was someone else. Like I've seen that movie, but it's been a long time. I did not make that. Connect. Yeah. Yep, it's him. Hmm. Unawares. But yeah, I mean, like, let's, that's one of those times where, like, y- you do have, like, those couple of dudes that will just have a run where it's like, how do you have five movies out in the theater in one year? Right. He's one, right. Of, the, one of them dudes, though. That, you know, take it when you can get it. It's true. But, uh, so, like, what's, that was the thing that I found most intriguing about all of this is just, like, how, how they set up stuff like while we don't have any kind of werewolf thing and everything, we do have the werewolf vision, if you will. Yes. And it's, I don't and know what I they did. That for that this was process. Done, I read it was done entirely in camera, yes. which I'm having a little bit of a hard time to believe, but I've never worked with a single inch of film. So there's stuff with film. I don't understand, but digitally saying you do that in camera doesn't mean anything, you know, do it in camera, do it in Adobe. It's all the same, but it looks to me like they, took the negative, printed it, then took the print and printed it again to kind of get a reverse negative sort of look. I I couldn't tell you exactly what they did on this film, but like watching it, especially when we get a close up of like some uh, a face and some and eyes and stuff like that of a person as opposed to just our scenery, which we mostly see in this vision kind of mode and everything. When we get to that face, I'm looking at that and I'm going... Oh, they did this in 1969 on a little film called 2001 A Space Odyssey <laughs> because mm-hmm. it looks exactly like it's got that same. But it doesn't scream that. Like, you, you kind of have to have that, like, you know, base knowledge of, like, that technical history of special effects of, of, on film and stuff like that to, hey, to pull from that. out on me when you said what the name of that 69 film is. Would you please repeat it for my benefit? 2001 A Space Odyssey. Because when they when they go through I've the whole that one. when they go through the whole big mind trip there and everything when they're going through the uh, the galactic portal and whatnot and all the colors are changing and everything again that was also done in camera a lot of people don't realize that all the space trip and all that all the wacky colors and all that jazz all in camera um, cause computers just didn't exist in 1969 nope a little bit out yeah. But I mean, so but just seeing that kind of that take of the vision and and whatnot and the smooth camera work that you you know, it's never quite wolf height though. 
I would say <laughs> it's a little bit, a little bit higher. I don't know that they made like they didn't like they didn't have the extra money for the Steadicam edition that makes it so you can do the low boom on it. <laughs> like, oh, that was expensive, Chuck. How about you just uh, duck down a little bit while you're walking? That'll that'll be just fine. <laughs> well, Spielberg, Spielberg's in the middle of making ET, right? Like ET hadn't come out yet, so they're not thinking about like like heights. <laughs> Like, listen, it could be a, there could be a four foot werewolf. What do you know? <laughs> but uh, did, I, I let's see. What else can I kind of? Uh, I, I would say to you because because you are Adam Portress mm-hmm. and he is Reginald Val Johnson. What did you think of him in this movie? Adam? Oh my gosh! When I like just hearing because you hear his voice before you see his face, or really mostly the back of his head. <laughs> Uh-huh. Uh, but oh, I was excited. I like. I think, I yeah, because you see his name in the credits. When I saw his name in the credits, I was like, "Woo! All right, I'm excited." So when he came in, I was just like, I was hoping it was a bigger part than that, but I was happy with what I got. Uh-huh. But yeah, it's just seeing them all young and kind of spry in there, just going like, I haven't, I haven't even made Die Hard yet. <laughs> it's true. You know, I I had forgotten because the <laughs> he didn't even know Hunter exists. Mm. Uh, I yeah, you keep fuzzing in and out, man. Uh, I had totally forgotten until I saw him in this just how many movies Dick O'Neill was in. Uh, when when I was a child, mm-hmm. Dick O'Neill was in literally everything when I was a kid because he is in he's in Wolf and you know he's also in The Jerk and he's in uh man. Like, uh, I, I want to say he's in a bunch of uh, John Carpenter movies, probably. Mm. Um, but he's he's in literally everything, like like every sitcom that you watch when you were a kid. Holy cow! One hundred forty five credits the man has. So yeah, he'd been in a he'd been in a thing or two. <laughs> yeah, I mean he he's literally in everything, man. Like like oh here we go because I'm I've, I've been vamping while I've been trying to figure out what I know him from. So yeah, like he's in Cheers and he's on. Like like Simon and Simon and Night Court and Murder She Wrote and you know like all of these Growing Pains like all of these shows that I grew up with he was in every single one of them so when he shows up in this movie I hadn't thought about him in thirty years and so, so when I see his face I'm like oh my god I forgot that guy was in everything when I was a kid it was good to see him yeah it's a, it's a lot of like you have these kind of character actors and again I think that's one of the one of the smart parts about this and especially when we're comparing against you know our other werewolf films and stuff is this movie is taking itself so darn seriously that like uh-huh. you you have to buy it. You, it's you, it's almost unfair to this movie that we saw it when we just saw you know what is from a lot of people considered one of the greatest horror movies of all time american werewolf in london like it's sort of unfair to this movie because it's it's a it's it's a fine movie you know it's not something that like i i I wouldn't recommend it to anyone but if you know if you're like if you come across it somehow because no one watches tv anymore but like if you come across it somehow it's like uh, like oh this is holding my interest for a bit like the people who made this movie knew what they were doing i do think one of the biggest problems with this movie though is its soundtrack or lack thereof yes there needs to be way more music in this thing there are so many quiet moments and i'm not like i'm not against having quiet moments in movies that's that's totally fine but you, there are just stretches of time where it is just like you you could doze off it, because not a lot's happening and not a lot is happening visually or sonically so you're just kind of like you're it's 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 a nap <laughs> it's it's a nap inducer if you're not careful it's also one of those movies, though, like it, it, this is a perfect napping movie, like you says, like if you're sick or something on the couch watching a movie, it, because you can pass out and wake back up and and, you know, 45 minutes has gone by mm-hmm. and the movie is so slow that you're not going to miss a whole lot. You're you're going to be able to, like, pick back up where like where the movie is. Yeah. So you're like, oh, right. OK, OK. So. Yeah, they've moved along a bit, but they're still like I, I kind of can figure out where they are. They're still just kind of, ah, well, we'll get there. Uh, is there going to be a wolf in this thing? Uh, just to say, <laughs> this here's a napping movie. That's what Wolfen is. It's the perfect napping movie. Do you have an hour and fifty five minutes that you'd like to get some good rest? Might we suggest Wolfen? Your doctor's prescribed Wolfen for, <laughs> for many years. 
<laughs> Since 1981, your doctor's been prescribing Wolfen for your sleeping needs. You know, now that I am now that I am dad age, and I have been dad age for a while, but now I'm like really like leaning into the dad part, part like a portion of 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 this age I'm at. Oh yeah, like this this is like this is this is totally totally what my kids would call a dad movie, like their dad movie, because it is something that like they're like. They would come into the room and be like, "What are you watching?" And I'd be, and I'd be like, "Dog Day Afternoon," you know, or whatever. Like that, and it feels like of of its time. Is this is one of those movies too, where if my if my kids were to walk in as I'm watching a show or a, a movie like this, they would be like, "Why are you watching the oldest movie ever made?" <laughs> you know, because it does have that feel to it. This too. could have that uh, the um, like Cinemax, like your like your dad watched this on Cinemax back in the day, or something like that. Feels, feels <laughs> like not HBO, not Showtime, but probably Cinemax would have Wolfen, or or you know, like just one era before the one we're sitting in now. Where oh, this is the, this is something that was on TNT. Well, yeah, and that's where that's where the ultimate uh, that's where all the dad films ultimately go to live. That's their right. retirement home is TNT and TBS, right. and that's where we play those movies. Where you're like, oh, guess what? The Matrix is now twenty years old. You're going on TNT nonstop, and we got the rights to it, and it's cheap for us, so uh, we just kind of keep pumping them out there. It, it sounds like you really did not like this movie very much. It's not that I didn't like it. It was just like. Ultimately, I think Bruce was right. Is it that like this movie is two and a, is two almost two hours long? If this was an hour and a half, I think we'd have a lot more fun with it. I think it would mm-hmm. move by a little bit. Um, we do get to just like, all right. Um, it feels like we're trying to shoehorn a message in at the end and everything, which I, it's fine, oh, I sure. guess. But it's a little, it's a little hammy, and it just it feels like you know, yes. nineteen eighty one liberal white guy going like, well, you know what. <laughs> Like yeah, we yeah, do. You're we, not wrong. We understand that, and but is 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 that the movie we all signed up for with Wolfen? I don't know that it is, but okay, sure. Again, we're we're looking at more of a uh, a drama kind of thing here than than what anyone would go to. And no one goes, boy, let's watch that spooky movie Wolfen. I don't think that phrase yeah, has ever actually been uttered. <laughs> the other thing too is that as as ridiculous as my next statement is going to be, I'll follow it up, but. You know, this the, the, there is nothing subtle about this movie at all. Whereas th- there is subtlety to American Werewolf in London. Like, look at look at the Jewishness of those boys. Mm-hmm. You know, they never come out and go, they're Jewish. Like, like I, I was trying to explain this to 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 Lindsay the other night, and she actually came up with the perfect line for this. She was like, "No one ever goes, hey, don't forget Yom Kippur is tomorrow." <laughs> you know, like they like like to show you. These are Jewish boys. Like they never do any of that. Don't you, forget you, your yarmulke before you leave out the for the for the for the pub. I'm like what? Exa- exactly. Why do I keep tripping over all your dreidels? Exactly. <laughs> I'm like oh boy, this is there's I- nothing like that. Whereas with with this movie and their and their environmental message that they're trying to give across, it's like guys, you could have you could have gone half on 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 your message here. And it still would have been too strong. Yeah, it it, it still would have been like okay, I'll, it's all so right ridiculous. now. <laughs> yeah, I oh I just because the the on the uh, IMDb they'll kind of play the trailer there at the beginning of the movie. Did you think that the the there was some guy there was a black guy that was like wearing a tux or something like right at the beginning? He looked a lot like BB King. I kept thinking like, oh, this wolf is gonna go kill BB King for some reason. I didn't. I don't know the one you're talking about. He's like right at the. Be- he gets killed with those with the couple uh, at the beginning. Which, by the way, was that? Isn't that something that we didn't really uh, go too much further on in the movie? Is that like all of the the people that got killed had like cancerous uh, things in them or something? I, that's what I thought too. Because they're they're taking out your week, right? Like that's what the the. the I mean, that's what. Pat yeah, yeah, did. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that was like it didn't feel like we were going, but like it th- there was a plot line that was just kind of there, and it's like, oh, that's an interesting thing. You're going only, and then they just kind of drop it and never really come back to it, from what I remember. Well, because kind of the way that the movie's going is that they're the wolves are taking out the weak, the weakest of the of your pack, but then later on, it it it's not about surviving, or it's about surviving in a different way, where it's not about like like food it's about 
survival and fighting against this other pack being human beings and New York real estate. Yeah, oh, well, New York real estate is where all the monsters live. So, <laughs> and all the wolves, apparently all the native American uh, wolves be living up in New York city of all places. It's not um, okay. Yeah. You'd think that they'd at least go someplace where it's easier to like hide like I, Long Island or something where it's like <laughs> much easier to hide there. Got to get on like the ferry or of an area. I, I liked the uh, the little inclusion of the Native Americans working on like the high high beams and stuff like that and everything because that yeah. that does come from a true place to where for whatever reason that stuff didn't really bother bother that group of people because you know metaphysical things that we can't quite understand. Right. Uh, so I thought that was really cool and I, I like how it looks like they for real put Albert Finney up there and doing all that stuff. I again they had money they had money for this movie. <laughs> They did, and I do. I do have to commend this movie on not being uh, 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 American Indians are magic. Like, yeah, I I was fully expecting it to be like it's mystical, but it's not magical, right? You know because what I mean? you 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 we well, I mean, I don't know with the title Wolfen and what we've been doing, we 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 expect Edward James almost to turn into a wolf, quite frankly. Absolutely, and and it and, doesn't and, really happen at least on screen, right? Right. And you can only fight a Native American with another Native American. Like I was fully expecting. <laughs> Those are the rules. <laughs> right. And that didn't happen. It was really it, 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 I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, so, yeah, that was it was just an interesting. Um... I think I think that's the entire that's my entire review of this movie is I was pleasantly surprised because I was really expecting just to, just it to be awful. You know, like, like, because every so often that's what happens with movies like this, where you're like, oh, that's why I've never heard of it, because it's the worst movie ever made. <laughs> but this isn't the case with this. No, it's 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 serviceable. But it, again, I if you would have called it anything outside of Wolfen, I think that's where everything changes. But then oh, I it, think it's great. I, 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 I think you're right. I, you're, you're you're kind of you're kind of lying to your audience with this title. I agree. But then again, you know that's that, that's a, a trick in Hollywood as old as Hollywood itself. If we're if we're quite yeah. honest with ourselves, yeah. we're just like slap a poster up there, put something wild on it. Now we're gonna make a movie to match this poster. It don't match at all. But you know, the, we had some lofty goals, didn't we? Yeah, Sylvester Stallone has made four Expendables movie. Nary a man has died. <laughs> They've all been so expendable that they just keep sticking around and coming back for for more each and every time. But yeah, yeah, who can blame him when there's at least a nickel to be? I heard he wasn't on that last film like at all. I but that wouldn't surprise me at all. Does it surprise you? I mean, no. One, I, he's one. He's very busy now. Like yeah. you know, what he wanted to get out of Expendables, he got <laughs> money. <laughs> money, well, money, and and to to. Be in the public zeitgeist again because he was out, man. I mean, yeah. you know, he's he's making movies like like Detox and stuff like that where it's direct to video. Like he he was kind of out. Yeah, exactly. It's it's wild the way the man's career's kind of gone and had that like weird ebb and flow so many times. Who has it's that true. many comebacks? I don't. I don't. Few. Very few have like can get to nothing, height of everything, back down to nothing, back to height, then nothing, then back to you know back and now back on top again. I guess. I mean, the closest is Travolta, but Travolta needs that one more uh, ascendancy now, to happen. Now, now this is this is all rumors and speculation, and you know how the internet be it do, be what it be. But I'm I'm to understand. That there's a, at least some sort of possibility that for his last film, Quentin Tarantino may have one more final big one for old Travolta. That's what Ooh, that's great. that's what the word on the street is. I don't know what what the role would be, but like somebody's Are saying, we reading it yet? Maybe we could put him in there. Right. No, we're not. We're not quite there. But uh, so but, okay. I just just I've got a pretty good signal for. I'm in a town called Alderson, so I have a good signal for about ten minutes. <laughs> uh, I what did you guys think of the ending? Because the ending is where we like we. We really plop all the action in like the last 30 minutes. And I feel like we could have scattered a little bit of action throughout the film. And perhaps we might have had a little more fun. But their version of action is just thrown on werewolf vision. And yes, yes, it is. They spent all their money burning that church they built. Um, here's the question I had, though. Is the White Wolf Albert Finney? Because I've watched this on the train at 7 a.m. And I might have missed some detail. Yes, White Wolf is Albert Finney. 
Uh, I love a good white savior movie. <laughs> but that's well listen when 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 liberal white guy hollywood wrote wrote the screenplay and everything i believe that he very much well he wrote the novel first actually uh but it, it's very much just kind of like uh you're right it's like oh we've got these great we've got these great native americans and blah 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 but really the only person that's going to be able to save everything hey, is this white guy are you guys are you guys ready to slap some knees this was the original dances with wolves <laughs> We use every piece of the wolf just to be able to wait a minute. That's not, that's not how that goes. But yeah, th- so we decide like at the end, that's when we finally bring in all the wolves for whatever reason, there's an amazing car explosion. It doesn't belong in this film at all, but that car explosion is <laughs> what part so of the great. Car, what part of the car does a wolf have to bite to make it explode? I don't know, but it was, it, they charged that thing so much. There was so much of an explosion with that. They were just like, it's got to look good. It's got to look cool. And it did. It has nothing to do with the story. It should not really be in there. But boy, oh boy, did it look awesome. So Whitley Stryber, who wrote the 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 novel that this movie is based on, mm-hmm. uh, a huge surprise here, not a, not a big fan of the movie. What? They, they, they ruined I... his baby? I know. I'm almost curious enough to read the novel too to see if he has any standing to complain. I'm, I mean, it's so rare, isn't it? Where like uh, author of novel says, "Amazing job, everyone!" High fives all around. Couldn't have been it's better. So rare. It is if they took what was in my mind and put it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I think was I like it Lewis Black said, "If you approach, mm-hmm. take my mess, boys, and fix it." Yep. I think Lewis Black said, if you ever see a music video that was exactly what you thought in your mind when you heard that song, kill yourself. <laughs> because that's not how that's supposed to work. Oh, <laughs> by the way, uh, old, old Dick O'Neill, huh? he, would, he would work with, uh, he would work with, um, uh, with, with Reginald Val Johnson seven more times on Family Matters. That's right. Commissioner Guy, seven episodes. It's like I told you, man. That dude was literally in everything. Your boy was in did. every, including Time Cop. Ooh, look at that. Huh? All right. Before we get, but he to, wasn't in Regular Cop. No, <laughs> just oh, regular. They should have a. We have Super Cop. We should have Regular Cop. I think at some point. You know, I uh, there's no idea too stupid for me to make a 20 minute short film. This is true. This is true. He's done it before, and he'll do it again. <laughs> All right, before we get to our final review, we do have to find out how this werewolf classic relates back one-to-one somehow with Sylvester Stallone. Thank you, Adam. I have a prepared statement. Mm. Hey, Mr. Stallone, how you doing? This week's Stallone connection is the cinematographer of Wolf and Jerry Fisher. He was also the cinematographer of your soccer movie, Victory, a movie that dares to ask the question, can you defeat the Nazis? with soccer (laughs) the answer is yes as long as pele is on your team Mm. jerry fisher was born in 1926 london which means two things one jerry fisher fought germans in real life and two jerry is a terrible name to have in 1940s (laughs) london In 1959, Jerry Fisher was a camera operator on a movie called Tarzan's Greatest Adventure, a movie some consider to be the best Tarzan movie ever made. Tarzan is played by Gordon Scott. Don't worry, I don't know who that is either. The bad guy is played by Anthony Quayle. Who? Exactly. He's the evil British guy, the villain in the movie. And there's also a little-known actor playing the role of O'Banion, some hack named Sean Connery. <laughs> Sean Connery was paid $5,600 for his role in this movie. When asked to play in the next Tarzan movie, Connery said he couldn't because, quote, two fellows took an option on me for some spy picture and are exercising it, but I'll be in you next. That's huh. the perfect Sean Connery impression. Perfect. The spy picture, the spy picture in question was dr no and sean connery never even bothered to look into the <laughs> rearview mirror to see what the tarzan people were doing ever again and honestly who can blame him sean connery will go on to fortune and fame and glory and jerry fisher would be the cinema photographer on the third best werewolf movie of 1981 <laughs> which isn't actually a dunk this movie is not that bad no 
And there you have it, Mr. Stallone. This week's Stallone connection is Jerry Fisher. I hope to hear from you soon. Your pal, Sweet Shanzi from the internet. Well, when Jerry hears about this, he's going to mention it to us on Twitter or something. Oh, wait, he did. That, that guy's probably dead. He did. <laughs> 1926, he did. <laughs> what? He's not still kicking around here at 108 years old? Just He's, Who do you think that guy is? Clint Eastwood? I'm going to make another movie right now. And I'm going to sleep through I it. was born during the dawn of movies, and I'll die when they die out. <laughs> he may, like, yeah, honestly, he may shoot a movie, and then, like, that's when film itself just disintegrates and just doesn't go. It's like, well, no, that's it. Clint Eastwood <laughs> is gone. The totem of film. <laughs> By who into the mist. All right, let's get down to it. Hi, Bruce, how, where, rather, does uh, Wolfen fall on the Robin rating system for you? On account of my special circumstances, I'm going to try to be brief. But first off, this isn't a werewolf movie, but it is an interesting movie. It's not a horror movie. It's not a Halloween movie. It's an interesting kind of, it's like a holdover, I think, from that uh, era of the 70s, the gritty, dirty kind of thing. You know, mm -hmm. so I'm going to say it's an interesting movie. Give it a Damien Wayne, but just don't be expecting a scary movie or Halloween movie. Just something kind of interesting to watch and talk about. If particularly if you admire film from that weird transition era that was the end of the seventh. Yeah, fair enough. Sean, what else? What for you? Oh, oh, for me, it is it is a it is a, a like complete middle of the road. Um, uh, Damien Wayne, um, just a plain old Damien Wayne. Um, it, it, you, you, there, there are worse ways to spend your time. Uh, the, and, and also seeing, seeing Albert Finney, cause I, in my head, I don't know what the, the picture of him is in your head. Like, I, I, I don't know which era Albert Finney you, you're familiar with most, but for me, it's, it's, it, and I don't know why, but Albert, uh, Albert Finney in big fish is the Albert Finney that's in my head. That's a great one. So, so to see him younger much younger is uh uh is kind of a treat like it's a weird treat so uh uh it's a it's a damien wing i the funny thing is for me I, I, why for whatever reason i don't know but i guess i went to see a movie like an albert was it, i'm fairly certain it was like an albert finney movie or something that like never ended up coming out or whatever it was just like a little festival thing or something but you never know it's like that's that's kind of the or maybe that was another person. I'm not sure. But anyways, um, I, I, I like this movie enough, but I, I think I'm going to go. I'm going to I'm going to exercise uh, a Carrie Kelly on this one uh. because it is not what I expected. It's not what I wanted. I but I'm OK with it. I like it well enough for what it is and what it's trying to accomplish. Uh, but if you're if you're like, again, if you're going in for a horror movie if you're going in for a spooky time, you will be in, indeed disappointed with this movie because that's that's not the movie that you're signing up for. No. So if we do anything within this episode, we hope that we've, you know, kind of at least imparted that to somebody that may be in the you know shoes that we were in previously, having not seen this film. Don't expect a horror movie going into this and you won't be, you know, overly disappointed with what actually happens. You'll go, oh, OK, this is more just that, like you said, kind of your uh, police procedural with a little bit of like, you know, Indian mysticism in there. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. But like overall, again, good could use more score for sure. You could lose 20 minutes and it might be an even better movie. Uh, but definitely worth, uh, like I said, seeing Albert Finney look like James May and... Um, <laughs> he does look like James May in this movie. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. <laughs> so just just do that, and then that'll be fine. So, uh, Bruce, you're still on the train here and everything. You're coming in. We're going to have a better episode next week because you won't be on the on the Mugen train there doing God knows what, uh, eating in the eating in the food car from what I what I would imagine being Bruce and all. Uh, but Bruce, what what do we got coming up next week for our uh, our finale here? Well, we're going to do Teen Wolf next week. But then there is one more week in October, isn't Oh, there? that's right. There's five in this one. Why Why so did we give Bruce I, permission to do five? <laughs> anyway, what I've a mistake. got some thoughts. We'll, we'll work out a good one. I think Ginger Snaps. Let's see what a female werewolf can do. Is going to be our, our fifth movie. I think the voters knew what they were doing when they voted for the five five episode month to be mine. I don't know that they do. But let, me, uh, let me ask you. But Teen you Wolf, Teen Wolf, Teen Wolf. Yes, so next week we'll be covering Teen Wolf, uh, the Michael J. Fox classic and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know, because I was I was obviously a couple years younger than you guys and stuff, but man, 
I, I, that was a film that I grew up watching just all the time and stuff. So I, I can't wait to talk about that one. Me either. It's one of those movies where like my family were late adopters to everything. And so when they first got a VCR, one of the first movies we rented was Teen Wolf. It was great. So we'll come back here next week and talk all about Teen Wolf and all that kind of fun stuff. In the meantime, uh, Sean, where else can they find stuff that we do? We got another show called 30 Questions, where each week we ask 30 questions of some nerdy property. Have it be your Star Wars uh, TV show or maybe a Marvel TV show. Uh, We are on hiatus now with that show, uh, but we will be back very soon. You just type in 30 Q. And uh, we will be the first thing that shows up. Yeah, that's what I like. We, we've done we've done at least with the podcast stuff. We've done good enough with the SEO to where we can just do 30Q or HMP or here. Moving the, it all kind of shows up there. And so it's good enough that we've got at least a, a, a foothold in the SEO just a tiny bit. That's all we need. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just as long as it doesn't show some other crap podcast that, you know, decides to use HMP as their kind of mock here. We've been doing it for almost a decade. That's ours. You, you st- some other crappy podcast. Yeah. This, cra- this one. This crappy podcast is, has had it for long enough. So, uh, you know. That's right. Have, have a good time. I, 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 I had to clean that up. All right. That is it, everybody. Join us next week when we're talking Teen Wolf for Sweet Sean's of Kovacs from the Internet. Bruce Leslie on a train. I'm Adam Porcher. Stay super, everybody. Bye, Marty and Evie. <laughs>